Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. Hey, tell Caden to stop playing. Caden, stop playing. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and le learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints that's watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Definition, what does repent mean? Turn away. Huh? Turn away. Turn away. Mel said turn away from all sin. I gotta, I gotta, you know what I'm saying? Listen, the Christian pastors, when they take not even the Christian pastor. This is the Christian, uh, what they call them? Apologists. When they be on stage, you know what I'm saying? They try to convince the atheists that Jesus is real. You know what I'm saying? You can't hear nobody. You can't hear what the crowd is saying. So they got to always repeat what the crowd says. So I got to learn how to do that. I got to ask you a question. You say, and I can say, the gentleman said this, that, and the other. And then I got to answer it. Then I can pretend like y'all saying something and y'all ain't even really say it. Everybody in the room said, I'm the most beautiful person in the world. You know what I mean? I'm going to knock you out. Y'all ready? All right. Uh, so last week, we talked about the prophet Amos. We read Amos chapter 1 all the way. May Allah. I'm trying, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do some work here. We read Amos chapter 1 all the way to chapter 5. Okay. Amos chapter 1 all the way to chapter 5. In those prophecies that Amos had, remember Amos is a prophet. So if we look up here and we get on the board here, you know what I'm saying? Let's see here. If we get on the board here, I don't want this here. Oh, yeah, I do. So if we get on the board right here, put this over on this side, though. So we are laser pointer get my laser pointer going so we are right here right my man amos he right here matter of fact let me go ahead and get my little pen so we on amos so we reading about all the prophecies that amos gave us and we about halfway through his book so today y'all willing we're gonna go ahead and finish it out but it's important to understand that he put prophecies against all the surrounding nations of israel so if y'all remember we talked about all of the nations here in this prophecy. We talked about the Philistines and Gaza. We talked about Moab. We talked about Edom. We talked about Ammon. We talked about Damascus and Syria. We talked about Sidon, right? We talked about all the nations that was around. But then he didn't stop there. Then he talked about Judah, right? And then after that, he just started going off on Israel. Right. The northern kingdom. That's kind of where we left off in chapter five with him giving a bunch of prophecies against the northern kingdom. All right. Y'all can't be in here talking. Y'all going to sit your butt down. Y'all going to pay attention. All right. So this is uh, this is uh, Amos chapter uh, six, verse one. Let's get right to it. Would you over there boxing with the thing? <laughs> What's today's date? The eleventh. You said what? Nothing. Six. This is Amos chapter six, six verse one. That's right. Yes, of course. Uh, woe to them that are at ease in Zion, mm -hmm. and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are mm -hmm. named chief of the nations, to whom the mm -hmm. house of Israel came. Mm -hmm. Pass ye unto Kelne and see, and from there go to Hamath the great, then go down to Gath of the Philistines, but they better than these kings. But wait, be they better than these kingdoms? Or their borders greater than your borders? Ye mm -hmm. that put far away the evil day and cause the seat of violence to come near, 
Mm -hmm. that lie upon beds of ivory and stretch themselves upon their couches and eat the lambs out of the flock and the calves out of the midst of the stall. That he talking about wealthy people, right? He talking about, yeah, y'all, all y'all Israelites that's wealthy, y'all chilling, got the big, nice beds, everything easy for you, right? He said, oh, he said, woe to you. In other words, destruction is coming to you, right? That's how this thing is set up. We don't really understand it, but that's how that thing is set up. The, the analogy I like to use is kind of if you like, if you like, if you like playing like, let's say you playing, let's say you playing, let's say you playing football, right? You playing football, who usually like has the advantage? What type of person usually has an advantage playing football? Somebody big, somebody big fast, well. right? So if somebody who fast got the advantage, what might you do to get the advantage over that person? That's defense. And what do you do in defense with football? You tackle, right? So you got like a wide receiver. I don't know if y'all know football rules, but if you got like a wide receiver, right? And then they snap the ball. Hike! Right? What is the wide receiver about to do? About to run. The wide receiver got to run. He got to run and get open. Can the defense just grab? Because the wide receiver fast. Can the defense just grab him right off the line? Why not? What do they call that? They call that pass interference. Right? If you get to touching the, the, the wide receiver too much, that's going to be called a pass interference. That rule is in place to keep the game balanced, right? But let's say we playing football in the street. We ain't got no rules, right? So although I'm fast and naturally I'm supposed to have the advantage and I'm playing against somebody who's bigger and stronger than me. They're not as fast as me, but they bigger and stronger than me. And since we in the street, they hike the ball, right? And I try to run, but they grab me and they hold me back. Since they stronger, I can't get loose. How many catches you think I'm going to get? I ain't getting nothing. I'm shut down, and But they breaking the rules, technically. But because it's in the street, no rules, I'm shut down, right? So if I lose all my game, right, because somebody is breaking the rules, but technically, ain't no rules going in the street. And then if somebody, if a referee came on the street and they said, no, 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 we playing by the rules from now on. Who going to be happy about that? Me. I'm the one who don't break the rules. I try to play by the rules. Right? Because it's an advantage to me to play by the rules. But the big, strong guy, it's an advantage to him to not play by the rules. So he's not going to be happy when somebody come and say, this, this is the rule and everybody got to play by it. Right? Well, that's how it's like when God come back. When the Most High God come back, it's going to be somebody. That's, some people are going to be like, hey, I like it the way it is. I'm getting money. I'm getting women or men. I'm doing all the things that I want to do. I got power. Everybody love me. I'm loving life. And when the Most High God come, he's going to say, we're going to turn this thing a little bit. Right? And it's only going to be the people that like playing by the rules. But they've, had, they've been at disadvantage just because nobody else plays by the rule, right? It's going to be the people with that mindset that the Most High God elevates. That's why right now he's talking about those individuals that are sitting back and taking it easy while other people are suffering. That are basking in sin and having joy in sin while other people are suffering, right? Let's watch. Keep going. that chant to the sound of the viol and intent to themselves instruments of music like David, that drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the chief ointments, but they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. Therefore now shall they go captive with the first that go captive and the banquet <coughs> of them that stretch themselves shall be removed. Mm -hmm. The Lord has sworn, him, has sworn by himself, saith Yahuwah, the God of hosts, I abhor the excellency of Jacob and hate mm -hmm. his palaces. Therefore, will I deliver up the city with all that is therein. And it shall come to pass, if there remain ten men in one house, that they shall die. 
and a man's uncle shall take him up, and he that hath burnt bur and he that burneth him to bring out the bones out of the house, and shall say mm -hmm. unto him that is by the sides of the house, Is there yet any with thee? And he shall say, No. Then shall he say, Hold thy tongue, for we may not take, so we may not make mention of the name of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. For behold, Yahuwah commanded, and he will smite the great house with breaches, and the little house with clefts. Shall horses run upon the rock? With will one plow with the oxen? For ye have turned judgment into gall, and the fruit of righteousness into hemlock. Look, he said, you have turned judgment into gall, and the fruit of righteous into hemlock. That's like poison, right? We're, what, we're, what he's explaining to you is people don't even, people, look, think about our time right now. When somebody says something that's right, it's hated. And it'd be simple stuff. It'd be stuff that's clear to everybody. And if you say something that's right, it's hated. Get online or get on TV and say something like, you know what? I feel like a man and a woman should be married before they start having sex. Just say something like that. Simple stuff. And it's like, yeah, that makes sense. Everybody know that makes sense. But just watch the reactions to it. Watch people jump out and be like, no, this, that, and the other. You know what I'm saying? That's the traditional mindset. Some people don't even want kids. It's nothing about somebody who does. You know what? Uh-uh. Some people don't want a man. Some people are not interested in the other sex. They just want to have a baby. What do you say about the girls that can't have babies? What do you say about the men who can't have babies? They'll start telling you about all these other things, right? But really, the only thing you said is, look, I feel like before a baby should come, a man and a woman ought to be married. But they hate judgment. They hate right things. Right. Well, this is exactly how it was in the in the uh, in the tribe of Israel. I mean, in the kingdom of Israel. Right. And we got into a point now. <laughs> you didn't got Sharon started. <laughs> but uh, we didn't got to a point now where all over the world, people had the same mindset. All over the world, people are worshiping Baal. They don't even realize it. All right. Keep going. Let's see what we got. For behold, the Lord commanded that he will smite the great house with breaches and the little house with clefts. Shall mm -hmm. horses run upon the rock? Will one plow? Will one plow there with oxen? For ye have turned judgment into gall and the fruit of righteousness into hemlock. Mm -hmm. Ye which rejoice in a thing of nothing would say, have we not taken to us horns by our own strength? But behold, I will raise up against you a nation, O house of Israel, saith Yahuwah, the God of hosts. They so now listen to what the Most High God is saying. He's saying, listen, house of Israel. Remember, that's the northern tribes. That's the green area, right? When he say house of Israel, he's talking about that green area. So he said, listen, house of Israel, I'm going to raise up against you a nation. What does that mean when he says, I'm going to raise up against you a nation? A nation. One yeah. nation. I mean, war. He's talking about he's going to bring a nation of people to fight against them. It's going to be war, like Brother T said. Right? That's important. You have to understand that this is a prophecy. Amos is walking around, right? Walking around in the streets of the green area in Israel, right? And he's, he's telling people that. And the king is hearing it. And all the officials, all the people with power are hearing this. And he's like, listen, it's going to be a nation that I'm going to bring up against you. Right? Keep going. Watch this. But behold, I will raise up against you a nation, O house of Israel, saith Yahuwah, God of hosts, and they shall afflict you from the entering in of he Hemeth unto the river of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Keep going. What we got? Thus has Yahuwah God showed unto me and behold he formed grasshoppers in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth and mm -hmm. lo it was the latter growth after the king's mowings and it came to pass that 
when they had made an end of eating the grass of the land, then I said, O oh Lord God, forgive, I beseech thee, by whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. Then Yahuwah repented for this. It shall not be, saith Yahuwah. Thus has Yahuwah God showed unto me, and behold, Yahuwah God called to contend, Yahuwah God called to contend by fire, and it devoured the great deep, and it did eat up a part. Then I said, O oh Lord God, cease, I beseech thee, by whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. And the Lord repented of this. This also shall not be, saith Yahuwah God. So now these are two scenarios that he gave Amos a vision of. First, he gave him a vision of, of vegetation, right? The food growing from the ground. And then grasshoppers came and they ate it all up. They ate all the new growth up. So what that represented was famine, right? We not going to be able to get none of the food. The grasshopper going to eat all our food, right? Then the Most High God was like, don't worry about it, though. That ain't going to happen. He said, I'm a, I, ain't gonna, I ain't even going to do that to him. Then he showed him another vision of fire. And the fire was so hot that it evaporated all the water around him. Right? And then they was looking like, he was, uh, Amos was looking like, oh, man, if this happened, we ain't going to have nothing to drink. So he said, you know what? Most high God said, nah, I ain't going to let that happen either. Right? So he's showing them visions. And he's, tell, he's showing them pretty much, this is what I could do to y'all. I ain't even going to do that, though. But I could do this. I ain't going to do that. And you're going to see that it gets worse and worse. So it starts with just food. Then it's all the water. And let's see what's next. The Lord repented for this. This also shall not be, saith the Lord God. Thus he mm -hmm. showed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall, a wall made by a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. Who knows what a plumb line is? A plumb line, you know what I'm saying? Let me show you a plumb line. Let me see if I got something I can show you a plumb line. We can, we can use one of these, really. So look, I'm going to take one of these off. You know what I mean? Think of this as a plumb line, right? So a plumb line, you're going to have, you got to look at it as like it's one straight rope. You know what I'm saying? We're going to pretend like this is one straight rope. But a plumb line, you're going to have like a weight at the end of a rope, right? And what you want to do is like, let's say you build something. Right. And you start just stacking stuff on top of it and you start putting putting your, your cement, your bind in between the bricks. So you put in a brick and then you put a bind in between the brick and another brick and a bind in between the brick and you stack it up. But if you're not paying attention, what could happen to what you're stacking up? It might go crooked, right? It might lean a little bit to the side. Like if Andre start putting together, what do you think it's going to do? You think it's going to be straight up and down? <laughs> You gonna be straight up and down if Max do it? What about you? Straight up and down? Somebody gotta come check it though. So I look at Andre's and I put it, and I'm gonna put the plumb line on it because I gotta wait. And so basically, I put the rope up against his building, and if the building goes right along with the rope, because I know the rope is straight, because it got a weight at the end of it. So if it go right along this rope, guess what I'm gonna say? That's good. It's straight up and down. Then I'm going to go over to Max. And I'm going to put that thing up against Max thing. And I'm going to be like, it's pretty close. It's straight up and down. And I'm going to go to DJ. Boy. <laughs> I'm going to put that thing up against DJ. And I'm like, DJ, that thing leaning like that when you put it up against DJ. And guess what I'm going to tell DJ? If you see it and it's not straight, he built it all the way up. And it's not straight. What got to happen? Take it down. It got to be torn down. So the Most High God is saying, I'm coming around with a plumb line. And anybody who's not straight up and down, I'm tearing their butt down. Right? That's the message that he's giving to Amos right now. These are every, we talked about it last week. The Most High God, everything he give us is logical. Right? We may not know what a plumb line is now because now we don't use plumb lines. We use the levelers. But it's the same idea as a leveler, right? If somebody, if I hire a contractor and they build this thing all the way up and then I come and I check their work and I put the leveler against it and after they done building, it's crooked, oh, we got to tear it down. It don't work, right? It has to be torn down. And that's what the Most High God is guaranteeing us. He's guaranteeing us, if you play with me, I'm material stuff down every single time, right? Keep going. Let's see what the books are. 
Dark, remember how to put this thing back on? Thus he showed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what do you see? What seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. Plum line. Then said the Lord, behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will mm -hmm. not again pass by them anymore. Yep, so the first couple of times you see he is like, I ain't even going to do that. All right? The next time, first time it was like, oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's a little bit of, uh, it's a little bit of, uh, grass getting ate by the grasshopper, but don't worry about it. I ain't even going to do that. All right? Then he looked at it again. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a fire. You know what I'm saying? But don't even worry about it. I ain't even going to do that either. Then he came back with the plumb line and he told him, I ain't passing by these boys again. I let them slide with the first two. Not this time. I ain't passing by them again. Now he got the plumb line holding it straight to find out who's straight up and down. Right? Who's up upholding the righteous path? Let's keep going. Watch this. And the high places of Isaac shall be desolate, and the sanctuaries mm -hmm. of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has look, fired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. The land well, look, we're talking about Bethel, Jeroboam, right? So look at this. We're talking about Jeroboam, but we're talking about this Jeroboam, right? So the Jeroboam, where's my mouth at? We're talking about the Jeroboam, this Jeroboam, right? So this Jeroboam is living at the same time as Amos. And hey. you have Amaziah, who's the priest. And Amaziah, the priest, is like, yeah, listen, 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 listen. Jeroboam got to hear about all this foolishness that you're talking about. So Amaziah goes and runs to Jeroboam, the king, right? Let's hear what the book say. I want y'all to pay attention to what Amaziah is saying. Those are hard to get out of my seat. Come down. <laughs> Thus Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive of their own land, out of their own land. Right. So now you see Amaziah, he's looking like, look, the land can't bear all of his words. In other words, he keeps saying this stuff and it's bringing the people down. Because Amos, Amos is not up there talking about good news. Right. He's not like the Christian pastor that be out here talking. Um, it's somebody on this side of the room. Somebody on this side of the room. You had a rough couple of weeks. You hear the whole room. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Uh, Yes, I did. Uh, uh, and uh, I feel that um, on this side of the room, I don't know, when it's strong on this side of the room, too. It's a sister. It's a sister that you had a rough couple weeks in. But God is telling you right now that a breakthrough is on the way. And they just get to talk. It's always good news. It's always light at the end of the table. I mean, uh, tunnel. It's always about What's been happening is not about what's about to happen. What's about to happen is always something good. What's been happening is all, it's always a breakthrough coming. Right? The enemy has been attacking your finances. It's always finances. Because they know we all broke. They be trying to tickle our little fancy. But that's not, that's not Amos. Amos ain't talking about it. He ain't walking around talking about no darn finances. Amos is telling you what it is. And he's saying it to kings and whole nations. So Amaziah, he sees this and he sees Amos walking around. And he tells Amos, I mean, he tells Jeroboam, he's like, listen, the land can't bear his words. It's too much for us. And on top of that, king, he keeps saying that you're going to get knocked off. Now, ain't none of my business now, but that's what Amos is saying. He keeps saying that you're going to die by the sword. Do that feel appropriate? So now he's trying to get the king. To do something against Amos. Watch this. Also, Amaziah said to Amos, O thou seer, go flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread and prophesy there. Right? So Amaziah, 
Amaziah looked at Amos. He said, look, why don't you take your butt to Judah? That's where they be doing all that wild prophesying stuff. He said, prophesy there. Don't do it here. He kicked them out of the land. So you remember last week we read how uh, Amos prophesied and he is like, uh, he is talking about Israel and he said, you tell the prophets prophesy not. So this is what Amaziah is doing right this moment. He's telling them, go do that somewhere else. We don't want to hear that here. We This is Israel. It's the house of Israel. We do not want to hear that foolishness. Right? But Amos is actually speaking the things directly from the Most High God. But if somebody is telling you that you're blessed and God loves you and no matter what you do, you can't make God love you more or less. If they tell you all these things and a man of God come back and tell you like, no, nah, you're on your way to hell. What you got to do is you got to repent. It has no effect because you're looking like, no, nah, my pastor been telling me all my life that all I got to do is repeat after him. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And by saying that, I'm saved. I used to have a pastor to say, if you know that 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 you're saved. Like, what does that even mean? Right? But they say meaningless things to us, and we start putting our confidence in them as opposed to putting our confidence in the word because nobody's taught us the word. We've just been sitting around in churches or sitting around in mosques and sitting around in in synagogues or wherever we sit around, sitting around in these camps, we never been taught the word. We've been taught people's theories and people's opinions and people. You went out. We can't hear you. Can't hear you. I can't hear you. The chat, can y'all hear Brother Phil? Yeah, we can't hear you. The heart, knock it off. We back. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, we get you now. All right, we back, <laughs> brother T. You know what I'm saying? When we got technical disco, you gotta, you gotta jump in, and hold me down. I, I was telling you, I was like, we can't. <laughs> um, now I had to switch the batteries out. Um, uh, but yeah, so it's it's important for us to understand that it's gonna be people in the world that don't want to hear the word. And our put it down, boy. And our mindset has to be to understand the word. If people don't understand the word, the word ain't going to have no effect on them. And that's fine for them. But that just can't be fine for us. We got to know what the words say. We got to understand what 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 is being told, what the message is, and we got to walk in it. If we do that, we're going to be all right. It's actually simple. What makes it hard is us wanting to sin. Right? But the book itself is simple. You take, you take everything else away from it. It's actually a simple way. It's a straight way. Right? Keep going. Let's see. But prophesy not again anymore in Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, and it is the right? king's court. When they say the, the king's chapel, it's talking about the king's palace, right? He's like, don't don't bring that mess to, to Bethel. You know what I'm saying? That's where the that's where the pre that's that's where the king like to go and talk to the priest, right? That's where the king like to be. He's like, man, don't do that stuff. No, he's trying to tell him take that stuff to Judah, man. You ain't even welcome around here. Right, but Amos is actually from the house of Israel. Keep going, watch this. Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And mm -hmm. the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said unto me, Go prophesy unto my people Israel. 
Now, mm -hmm. therefore, hear thou the word of Yahuwah. Thou sayest, prophesy not against Israel, and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. Therefore, mm -hmm. thus says Yahuwah, thy wife shall be a harlot in the city, and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy land shall be divided by line, and you shall die in a polluted land, and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his land. Right? So he let them know. He's telling them, listen, a nation is going to rise up against you, and y'all going to die by the sword. After he got to talking like that, he was like, no, 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 no. Get this man out of here. You take your butt to Judah. So then Amos had to come back to him and was like, listen, you think I'm doing this because I think it's fun? Like I want to be a celebrity or something? He's looking like, man, listen, I was a herdman. I ain't no son of the prophets. I ain't no, you know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't, I wasn't like built for this. Nobody prepared me for this. He's like, I was just, I just took care of the animals. The most high God gave me word and told me to speak it. And that's what I'm doing. I'm speaking it. But he is like, because you run in your mouth, Amaziah, this is how it's going to play out for you. Your wife going to end up being a harlot. Your butt going to be taken to a polluted land. So in other words, he's telling you that he, you going to see the captivity happen. And then after that, he said, and the land going to be divided up. He just letting them know everything you think is not going to happen. And everything you're trying to get me not to say. It's definitely going to happen. And let me add a little bit more to it. Now your wife going to be for the streets. That's what they say. For the streets. That's what the kids say. Now you ain't got no business knowing what that means. <laughs> Keep going. Thus has the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what mm -hmm. seest thou? And I mm -hmm. said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, the end has come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. And the mm -hmm. songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, saith mm -hmm. Yahuwah God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail. Saying, when, we, when, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn? And the Sabbath right. that we may set forth wheat. So now the people are looking forward to remember, this is the house of Israel that he's talking to. So remember, they they was always given like a, a defiled version of of our law. Right. They they are. They never really adhered to our law because Jeroboam, you know, would have them and encourage them to do different things. Right. So they mindset was, oh, let's get this Sabbath over with so I can go sell some stuff, make me some money. Right. Let me get the new moon over because we don't work on the Sabbath. Right. And we don't work on the new moon. So they looking like, man, let the new moon get away. That way I can go make some of this money. He's like, man, your mindset is all in the wrong place. Right. Keep going. Watch this. And the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great and the falsifying the balances by deceit that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes. Yea, and right. for the refuse of the wheat. So then, on top of that, he's like, they, they, they messed up the balance. Right? So remember, we would pay for stuff. Like today, we just got a dollar. Right? And a dollar is worth a dollar, whatever it say. They messing up the... To be honest, these people messing up the balance too. They just do it in a different way. Right? But we just got a dollar and we say, oh, a dollar is worth a dollar. But that's not necessarily how I worked before. We would trade things, right? So I might say, Andre, give me some silver, right? Andre say, I want to buy this phone off you, right? So I say, I can't ask Andre. I say, well, this is, not, this is a thousand dollar phone, Andre. You know what I'm saying? But we don't got dollars, right? So instead, I got to get what I think this phone is worth in silver because Andre want a phone and I want silver, right? So I tell Andre, Give me 13 shekels of silver, right? Well, how much does a shekel weigh? The only way to know that is we say, all right, I know that a shekel weighs five rocks. So I take five rocks and I put it on the end of a balance, right? And everybody knows that these particular five rocks is the same as a shekel, right? Then I might find one rock that says, it's the same weight as these five rocks, right? So I got one big rock that weighs the same as these five rocks, right? Guess what? Both of these are equal to the weight of a shekel. 
So I would take this big rock and I keep it in my backpack. Because anytime that somebody asks me for a shekel of silver, I'd be like, ah, 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 give me my rock. Because I know this rock, I already tested this rock. It's the weight of a shekel. So I put it on there. And then I put my silver on the other side and be like, see, it's balanced. That means this, this, this silver weighs the same amount. So let's say pounds, right? This rock weighs thir three pounds. And this silver is three pounds. There you go. I have, now you have three pounds of silver, right? That's how you make it work. But now when somebody comes and he say, give me three pounds of silver. I'm like, yeah, for sure. I'll give you three pounds of silver. He say, do you have your weight with you? No, nah, man, I ain't bring it. But you got, don't even worry about it. I got a weight. So I'm getting three pounds of sugar, silver from him. But I'm going to take a rock that weighs five pounds. And I'm going to tell him that it only weighs three pounds. I'm be like, yep, that's three pounds right there. So he's just going to keep putting his silver on the other side to make it balance with the rock that weighs five pounds. He think he's giving me three pounds of silver, but really he's giving me more. He's giving me five pounds of silver. So I'm stealing from him at that point because I tricked him into thinking that he's only giving me three pounds of silver, right? So when the Most High God is talking about the weights or the balances, that's what he's talking about. People cheat and they tell you like, no, 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 no. This is, this is the weight of the, 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 the shekel. This is the what you know. What I'm saying this is the this is the this is the exact weight right here. Mm -hmm. Give it to me. And really, they cheating them and they giving more. Or if they got to pay out, they say, "Oh yeah, no, this is the weight. This is the weight of of three pounds right here." And really, it's only the weight of two pounds. So then they weigh out two pounds worth of silver. They give it over and they tell them, "No, nah, that's three pounds. It's the weight of three pounds. No, it's not. It's two pounds." Right? That's what the Most High God is talking about. He's saying this is the type of stuff that our people did. Let's see. Keep going. that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great and falsifying the balances by deceit, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, mm -hmm. and sell the refuse of wheat. The Lord has sworn by the excellency of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their works. Mm -hmm. Shall not the land tremble for this and everyone mourn that dwells therein? And it shall rise up holy as a flood and it shall be, a ca and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahuwah God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Mm -hmm. And I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. And I will mm -hmm. bring up sackcloth upon all, upon all loins and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an only son and the end thereof as a bitter day. Behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a what he say. water. He says, yeah. look, all this stuff that he's talking about, he ain't talking about, he ain't talking about what's about to happen to Israel and, and what we about to read. He's talking about something that's about that's gonna happen in closer to our day. Right? He said, I'ma turn, I'ma turn the lights out. Broad day, I'ma turn them out, and I'm gonna make it noon. Right? He's about to change up how everything works for a quick second. Keep going. Watch this. He said he's going to make it a famine of what? Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst. He said, not a famine of bread, but what? Nor of thirst for water. Or of thirst of water, but watch this. But of hearing the words of Yahuwah. People are going to have a famine of hearing the words of Yahuwah. What in the world could he be talking about? Right? When he's talking about the word of Yahuwah, he ain't talking about what I'm doing right now. He's not talking about, he's not talking about what Brother T is doing. When he's talking about hearing the word of Yahuwah, he's talking about a prophet. He said, I'm going to make it to where nobody gets to hear a prophet. It's a famine. A famine talks about when there's a scarcity of food, right? So he's saying there's going to be a scarcity of prophets. This is where we are now. It's why people looking like, man, no, nah, it ain't no more miracles. You know what I'm saying? Miracles ain't real. Right? This is why everybody make up, they, everybody listening to their intuition and listening to their own imagination and everybody act like, well, God just told me, I heard Jesus speaking to me. The Holy Spirit moved on me and said I should do X, Y, and Z. It's like, mm-mm. 
Average y'all ain't hearing nothing but darn indigestion. Darn stomach is growling. Right? And we make a darn mess out of it. But he's saying, no, I'm sending a famine out. Right? Nobody's going to hear the word. Nobody's going to hear the most high God speak. And that's where we are right now. Watch this. Watch what he say next. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of Yahuwah and shall not find it. And that mm -hmm. day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. They that swear right. by the sin of Samaria and say, Thy God, O Dan, live it. In the manner of Beersheba, live it. Even they shall fall and never rise up again. All right. So he said the people are going to be running back and forth and going from sea to sea to hear the word. So that's why you got people that's just jumping on. Listen, if you look at these people, the average people that tell you, oh, yeah, yeah, I came into the truth. The average in them all and, and a lot of us, a lot of the ways y'all found me, the ones of y'all that's online. Searching the Internet. And you go to one page and guess what? One page, this person is in California. Next page, oh, he in New York. Next page, he in Texas. You go to the next page, he in Idaho. Next page, he in Atlanta. Right? It's a, it's a, it's a few people that then got to us all the way from Brazil. London. I think it was a, yeah, a couple from London. Yeah. Right? They're going C to C to try to figure out what is said in the word. This is what the book says. Everybody's doing it. I just want to hear the word because you can't find it nowhere. Everybody lying about this book. Every time you turn around, somebody lying about the lying about the Bible. Oh, the Bible got contradictions in it. This and that. Stop that line. You've never read it. Yeah, but they never picked up the Bible. Why are you talking about it got contradictions? You didn't heard something and you just thought every you just thought it was so sensible the person that you heard of. We just believe some of the stupidest stuff. Don't do no investigation. Just rock with it. Whatever it say, we roll with it. Talk to these people who ain't never read the book. Gonna tell you what's in it. Just shut your darn mouth. Let's see. Keep going. I saw the Lord standing upon. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and He said, "Smite to smite the lintel of the door, that the post mm -hmm. may shake, and cut yep. them in the head, all of them." And I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that mm -hmm. fleeth of them shall not flee away. And he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Mm -hmm. Though they dig into hell, thence shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out from there. And though mm -hmm. they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them. Mm hmm and though they go into captivity before their enemies, thence will I, thence will I command the sword, and it shall slay them. And I will set my eyes upon them for evil and not for good. And mm -hmm. Yahuwah God of hosts is he that touches the land, and it shall melt, and all that dwell therein shall mourn, and it shall rise mm -hmm. up holy like a flood. It shall be right. When he say the land shall me. melt, he talking about lava. Right? He said the melt, the land gonna melt. And he said, then after it melt, it's going to rise up like a flood. Talking about something different. He talking about, you know what I'm saying? You ever seen a volcano? You know what I'm saying? Watching YouTube. Look up, look up, look up a volcano. You know what I'm saying? Erupted. You're going to see all the lava just kind of flow out of that thing. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's like. Huh? Right now what? Oh, yeah. No, not right now. Do it on your own time. All right. Keep going. It is he that buildeth his stories in the heaven and hath founded mm -hmm. his troop in the earth. He mm -hmm. that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord mm -hmm. is his name. And are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O Israel, saith Yahuwah? Mm -hmm. Have I not brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Kaphtor and the Syrians from Ker? Behold, the eyes of Yahuwah God are upon the sinful kingdom. 
And I will just right. So listen to what he's saying. Right. He's saying, aren't you just like the Africans to me? When he said the children of Ethiopia, he's like, aren't y'all just like the Africans? That's how kind of how we would see it today. Aren't y'all just like the Africans to me? The Hamites. Then he started naming nations. He is like, because you got to think about it. We are both. What would we be saying? Are we God's people? Most our God brought us out of Egypt and brought us all the way into the land of Canaan. So he's telling me like, you ever heard of Kaftor? I brought them out of Egypt too. Right? He's saying all these things. Where do you think the Philistines came from? They came out of there too. They came out of Africa too. He's like, I brought all these boys up and then put them right by you. He's like, you're just like them to me. It ain't no different where they at now. A lot of them boys I done killed off. They ain't got no favor. He, he's letting us know, you're just like them to me. I'll play you just like I play them. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saying mm -hmm. that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith Yahuwah. For lo, I will command, and I will sit the house of Israel among all the nations, like as corn mm -hmm. is sit. I will sift the house of Israel among all nations like corn is sifted in a sheave. Right. Yeah. And that's where we are now. He's he's telling us how it's going to play out. He basically, you know, what sifting is, who knows what sifting is. Like, 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 uh, yeah, right. So you, you used to find gold back in the day. You know what I'm saying? It was a whole, when they came to America, they say, this is what they say. You know, they know. They say, is a whole lot of gold, you know what I'm saying, on the West. So then they would they would take their little stagecoach, the way they used to teach it to us. Stage, is it stagecoach? Station wagon, what's it called? It was like stagecoach and station wagon. Station wagon is a car. Okay, stagecoach and wagon, the, the, the coach wagons. The, they had a wagon. Yeah. You, yeah. Got the, you got the horse on you, sit on the front of that thing, that thing just... You could you sit that thing just look boring. Boy, that thing look you just in there. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, a lot of them walk. They walk too. And then they walking. You know what I'm saying? They had listen, a lot of them had them. They own the thing and they walking up alongside of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You ever seen the cartoon where they got a stick and they got the bandana hanging on the side <laughs> on the back of the stick and they got the clothes on the inside? That's how I like to imagine my white folk. You know what I'm saying? They just sitting there and they just walking with that thing, just like this, walking on the side of it. And then they go and they do all that traveling because they taking a risk and then they taking a loss in the hopes that maybe they can go out there and find gold. So they would go and they would take these little pans with a bunch of little holes in them, right? And they put them inside of the dirt and inside of the water and then they shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it because they're hoping that after the dirt, sh dirt sh shake off, it might have a little bit of gold still in there. And the holes are too big for the gold to fall through, but they small enough for dirt to go through. So the dirt go through, and the only thing after you get done sifting it, the only thing you got left is what you're looking for. Right? Rocks so, and gold. Huh? The rocks and gold. The rocks and the gold, right? So that's what the Most High God is talking about. He's saying, imagine all the dirt falling from that sifter. You know what I'm saying? You pick up the dirt from one spot, but then you start going like that and shaking it and moving it. It got picked up from one spot and then it spread all over, ain't it? It just gets spread evenly all over when you're shaking it out. And he's saying, I'm going to sift you just like that throughout all the nations. So that's why you can see black people everywhere, but not just any black people. The black people are descendants of the slaves. There was a slave trade. And black people got picked up, a particular group of black people got picked up from the west coast of Africa. And this particular group of black people were Israelites. And they grabbed us and they spread us all over the world. Well, that's what the Most High God is talking about. That's where the sifting happened. So this is all prophecy. You have to understand this is how the Most High God worked with his prophecy. He told us how this was going to work, but he's mixing in the stuff. That, look, he's mixing in stuff that's going to happen in a couple of years with stuff that's going to be happening thousands and thousands of years later. And somebody listening to this got to try to decipher it and try to understand, like, what does this stuff mean? Right? I want y'all to understand that because one day it's going to be a prophet that come. And when the prophet come, it's going to be similar to this, that people not going to understand, people not going to believe it, they're going to misunderstand, they're going to they jump to conclusions. 
We don't have to try to predict stuff based off of the prophecy. The only thing we do is hear the prophecy and keep our eyes open and watch how it's going to play out. That's it. It's not about predicting it. It's not about saying, oh, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. It's just about saying the most high God said X, Y, and Z. And when it happened, we get a man glory. All right? Keep going. Ye shall not, ye shall not the least grain fall, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All mm -hmm. the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake my overtake nor prevent us. In that day will I rise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. That they right, so he's telling us this whole land one day gonna be destroyed. He's talking about Israel. He like everything gonna be destroyed, but he's like that day I'm gonna raise up the tabernacles of David, and I'm gonna restore his ruins. Now at this point, right now, the tabernacles of David is running strong. There is a kingdom that comes from David line. When Amos is saying that the kingdom is sitting right there, so anybody reading it would look at that and be like, "Oh, that means one day." All this going to be gone and turned to ruins because the Most High God said he's going to have to restore the ruins. Right? So you got to understand the Most High God talking about stuff that people looking at like, I don't even, this don't even make sense right now. What you talking about? We got a palace in Judah. Everything good. Judah probably looking like, I ain't got nothing to do with that prophecy. Right? But the Most High God said, oh yeah, I'm going to restore David's house. They probably looking like, huh, what that mean? They just mean make it just like when David did it because they like his house is restored. But they don't understand that later on, all that stuff going to be destroyed. Later on, Romans going to come take, take care of all that. They going to break all that down, right? Then after the Romans, then you got the, the Arabians that came. You know what I'm saying? And after the Arabians, then these Jews came, the Jewish people came, right? That leave us where we are now. Keep going. Watch this. And I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name. Say if which are what? Doeth this. All the heathen that are called by my name, which are called you by You got to pay attention to that. It's a lot of people that get out here and tell you Edom is the white man. That's a lie. How we know Edom ain't the white man? But Jacob and Esau was brothers. And Edom Jacob and Esau was brothers. How else we know that? Esau, uh, uh, Edom, because you know what they're going to say. They're going to point to some, they're going to find some darn twin and one being an albino. They, you know, they do the same thing every darn time. Okay, here go a picture. It's a real, it's a real twin. You know, these are real twins in Africa. They always find some obscure, obscure place, you know what I'm saying, in Africa or in London. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, you got to give them that one. How else we know? Because Esau come from Shem. And we know Shem we know that white folks come from Japheth, one of the sons of Noah. And they said, okay, and, and you know what they're going to say to that. They're going to be like, no, nah, that's a lie. That's just what we've been told, right? Mm -hmm. The owls of the Gentile, that's not what that means. It means something else. You know, they're going to come up with something for that. How else we know? Yeah, well, even the, uh, even the Jewish people will tell you they come from Ashkenaz, which was the Gentile. Right there, broad day, you go to the Jewish website, you know what it's going to say? Ashkenazi Jew. Ashkenaz is a descendant of Japheth. Right? With but guess what? That's not good enough. That's not good enough. How else do we know? How was Edom or Esau described? Ruddy. And he was ruddy, wasn't he? Who else was described using that exact same word? King David. King David was described as ruddy. So these people, they have set us up to make a fool out of ourselves. Because we'd be sitting here saying, eat him at the right way. You know why? Because he came out ruddy. Then they show all these pictures of rednecks. That's why we call them rednecks. That's why they call rednecks. I, saw, I kid you not, I saw a picture. It was a bunch of white folks playing in the sun with bad sunburn. All of them were super red. And then on the picture, it said, eat them mites. I was like, these people didn't lost their darn mind if they think that white folks is what's being described as red, ruddy. I mean, you even got, you know, our people even say, like, especially down here in the South, they're like a red bone. 
Uh, All right. Like, I mean, uh, like my back in my day, you get a you get a nice, pretty, light skin one. You know what they call that? That's a red bone there. Yeah, uh, my uh, my partner from Louisiana. I remember uh, back home, he was like, when he first saw my wife, he was like, he's like, is your wife like white or a red bone? <laughs> All right. Because so that's what we like, call. Yeah. I like, that's what we call the lighter skin. <laughs> we call the light skin people red bones. Yeah. Right. So we look at it, it's all right. You ain't, you ain't nothing to be ashamed of, Bill. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? It's all right. You know what I'm saying? It's all right. You, know what I'm you can't do nothing about it. But that's what we called them, right? Well, it's no different with our book. It called us, you know what I'm saying? How was David described? Ruddy, so he is a red bone. And what else? Yeah, he was, uh, he, they said he was handsome, a fair countenance or something like that. A fair countenance and handsome. Yeah. He tell them, fair is light, right? So he tell them. David was light skinned. So the trap that they'll put us in, right? And people don't get this. That's why they let y'all stupid butt say it. They don't even challenge you on it because they know one day that when these Hebrews get big enough, we going to light their butt up with this one. All they got to do is point to it. Oh, if you say that we white, if you say that Edom is the white man because he ruddy, then that proves that Hebrews are not black because David was ruddy too. And as soon as, as soon as they lay it out, your butt ain't going to be able to do nothing but shut up. Then you're going to be backpedaling, trying to change up what you're saying. Ruddy ain't got nothing to do with darn white. The man came out hairy and ruddy. They ain't got nothing to do with darn white. Esau is darn just like us. Probably find them down there in Saudi Arabia and all them places. Right? Y'all don't realize that it's black people, it's darker skinned people that, that's, that come from the same places as us all over the world that are held down. You're not going to see them on TV. They're going to be poor and in the streets and on the side. That's where Esau is. I've been reading all these other books and they, you know what I'm saying, they got y'all butts confused. You know what I'm saying? That's why King Solomon told you, you know what I'm saying, of making books, there ain't no end. Yeah. Y'all always trying to argue with me. Oh, well, have you read this? Have you read that? Have you read this? I'm like, nah, man, I just read the book. And the honest is, I have read a lot of that foolishness y'all read, y'all talk about. I didn't, I read probably just as much as all y'all butts. I didn't forgot so much of the stuff that I, I didn't read. Right? But it's like you you read so much of this stuff, and it's just like, man, listen, people just be saying stuff. Just like now. Get online right now. You just you can find anything you want. All online was, it was just a little bit harder to get online back in the day. A thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, it was harder to get online. Getting online just meant that you got a book and you wrote it. So it was hard. But people still did the same thing. They come up with something and they just write it down and they say it. I ain't got to listen to everything everybody be talking about. These people will tell you, because it's true that these Jewish people used to call uh, the Romans Edomites. It's true. But it's only because the Romans was bullies. You know what I'm saying? So it was like we we had to speak in cold, but they get our butt, and we hated them, and we hated Edom. We was like, okay, we gonna call them Edomites, but that was speaking in cold, right? And you can find if you do your research, you can find I'm a I'm a I'm gonna pull it all together when I get some time. I'll pull it all together and just put it up somewhere. Maybe put it up on the site so we can kind of put it to rest. Everybody can just refer back to that article or whatever. When I get some time, I'm gonna write it all up. But if you look at it, it's multiple sources of people acknowledging that it was speaking in cold to call the Romans the Edomites. These white folks is not Edomites. You can tell the white folks will tell you. They, they'll tell you where they're from. Yeah, they like can, the brother said, Ashkenaz Jews, they're telling you where they're from. Yeah, they can trace They can trace their stuff easier than us. Like, we went through slave, slavery and all our stuff was stolen. Like, like these white folks, they definitely can, like, Trace their stuff back with no problem. Yeah, trace their stuff right on back. Yeah. Keep going. Let's see what we got. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and all of the heathen, which are called by my name, saith Yahuwah, that doeth this. Part, the part that's important there is called by my name. Edomites are going to be called by Yahuwah's name. And those are the Edomites that's going to make it into the kingdom. And we're going to have rule over them because we're going to have rule over all nations, right? 
So it's going to be Edomites that are delivered, right? That are in the resurrection. And we are going to be able to rule over these people, right? Just like the rest of the nations. They're going to make it in just like us, right? We just going to have rulership over them by default. Keep going. Behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. And the mm -hmm. treader of grapes, him that soweth seed. And the mountain. Right, that's, in other words, he's saying stuff is going to go backwards. The plowman, right? So what is the plowman doing? If you plow, what you're doing is you're preparing the ground for seed to be put in it. Right? So he said the plowman is going to overtake the what? The reaper. The reaper right? The reaper. You ever seen the grim reaper? Right? So the grim reaper got this thing, this sickle. Right, the scythe, yeah. So the 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 Grim Reaper has that, and then what that's for, what that tool is for in real life, is for cutting down the crops. So you will go and you will walk through the field, and you got this bundle of wheat, and it's growing out of the ground. So you just chop it like that, and after you chop it, you grab it and you bundle it up. That is reaping. You ever heard the fr the the phrase "reap what you sow"? So that means sow means that I'm putting seed in the ground, right? So I sow by putting seed in the ground and then I reap what comes from those seeds. Right. I get it, bundle it up and I take it. Right. So he's saying that the plowman, the person who gets it ready for the seed to be put in the ground is going to overtake the person who gets the result of the seeds growing. Keep going. What you got? Yes. Yeah. So, the, the, you know, what I'm saying my nephew asked, did they also use cattle to plow? Absolutely. Absolutely. You would have, you know what I'm saying, maybe ox sitting on the front and they'd pull the plow. And that's, you know what I'm saying, that would be equivalent to us at like AI. You know what I'm saying? That's automation. You know what I'm saying? That's automation. You know what I'm saying? You put the, you put the, you put, you know what I'm saying? Whoever invented that, they look like, oh boy, that just cut down labor costs by half. Right? And that's what we still trying to do. We still constantly are trying to advance and do stuff easier and spend less money and all that. Right? But that's what we look at. He says things are going to be backwards. The person who starts the process is going to overtake the person who ends the process. But well, then watch this one. And the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed. Right? <laughs> so now the one that sows the seed, the one that plants the grapes, right? He's going to be overtaken by the one who treads the grapes. The one who treads the grapes is the one that's making wine. So the, the one who treads the grapes is the end of the process. Right. The one who sows the seed is the beginning of the process. So he says now the end of the process is going to overtake the beginning. In the first example, the beginning of the process is going to overtake the end. Right. What he's saying is everything going to flip. Everything is going to be backwards. That's what we have to look for. Things are going to be backwards. Keep going. Watch this. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt. Mm -hmm. And I will bring again the captivity of the people of my people, Israel, and they shall build the way cities and inhabit mm -hmm. them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They also mm -hmm. shall make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will mm -hmm. plant them upon their land and they, they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I get, have given them, saith Yahuwah, thy God. Mm -hmm. Keep going. That's all the Amos. That's, that's all the eight? Amos. Oh, that's nine? Yeah. Okay. So we can end there. So uh, so you look at the book of Amos, and book of Amos is the first book, the first prophecy that we have that start to warn the northern kingdom that something's about to happen. You can see that Amos didn't get too explicit. We just hear, heard things like, yo, y'all going to get chased up out the land. Y'all going to go in captivity. It's going to be a nation that rise against you. Those little things that he just telling you, like, this is about to happen. So the people have to start being afraid if they believe what Amos is saying. They have to start thinking about it like, man, this might be rough if they believe what Amos is saying. If you don't believe what Amos is saying, you're going to be like Amaziah and be like, man, take your butt on the Judah. Ain't nobody trying to listen. All right? Ain't nobody trying to listen. All right. So next week, we're going to go into the next prophet. Our next prophet that we're going to deal with is Hosea. All right. Hosea. And a little bit into Hosea, we're going to read about some of the other kings, all right? We're going to start off with a little bit of Hosea. We're going to read a little bit of, uh, of the other kings, and we're going to continue through Hosea until we get to the end of Hosea. 
then we'll move on to the next prophet after that we'll keep going and isaiah we're gonna spend a little bit a little bit of time in isaiah because it's a longer book okay any questions You know what I'm I gotta, I gotta get the people online some time to answer, answer, ask a question. Then we be having what's called fellowship hour. Everybody get on my case. You know? Hi, Mel. <laughs> what's up, Andre? Was that Max? You got the whole crew. Hey, y'all oh, relax. Uh, y'all touch that, that touch our camera. I'm gonna have to touch y'all face. Huh? All right. Sister Pamela said no questions. Sister Sharon, you got a question? You got a question? Sister Sharon was quiet today. Earl, what's going on? You can see the top of Uncle Phillip's head. All right, that's all y'all got. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to shut him down. Yeah, I ain't saying nothing. All right, go ahead and uh, uh, press in stream. <laughs> 